Giving all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock of Israel. Shalom and salutation to you, Akim, out here pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect, Akim, Akwav, scattered Israelites and Israelite foreigners. I brought this out, this video will be edifying. And I'll just title it, Coming to a Country Near You Soon. Alright, so this video stumbled across my feed. And it's a spirit because we are in the year of the Jake of Jacob's trouble, or what the apostle to Hall coined as the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. And the reason why we're hoping for Jeremiah 37 to come to pass is because that means we're drawn that much closer to the day of the Lord. And even though the day of the Lord is judgment, judgment also brings salvation for his elect. So we are amongst those who are hopeful. In our salvation, we're going to remain hopeful even during this time of trials that the Lord's going to send upon the earth, including the MOTB um, C HIP that's going to be mandated by the B system, America and NATO and the EU. So, this video I stumbled across, I'm going to go ahead and play it, watch it, comment on it, and then bring out the scriptures. It's only a minute and 14. I say I finish up now. You don't give me money or you give me. What can you say? You will give me. No other way. Yeah, the people, I will show you with your if last you bond. If you, if you don't want to give me a man, I will show you with your last bond. Took him to shower or to the hot shower. I like to show you there I want money. Oh. Or to the oven, micro oven. I put it like this to the oven then you see i want man if i've got a child there you're saying you would uh, you would hurt the child to, to find I out the information the child i put it in oven i make oven on you wanna give us you never give me you never give me oh i took your wife i put it i i i, I take your wife i put a knife here like example you see the blood I say I finish up now. You don't give me money or you give me. What can you say? You will give me. No other way. Like, example, right. you see the blood. I say. So you hear what he says, you will give me no other way. And we praise the Lord that they just opened up these borders. Um, I think a, no, a new report said over 200,000 um immigrants was flown into uh US by Biden administration to some of these various cities across the US. You know, these people nine out of ten, when they can't find money or when they can't get no decent work, they gonna rebel. And their rebellion ain't gonna sound or feel like the type of rebellion that you used to protest and voting. Nah, they gonna do it in a different way. They gonna go by any means necessary. However, they used to get it, give it up in their old country, the old way. And a lot of people don't really look at America as nothing anyway. When they come over and they realize it's not what it was hyped up to be, you 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 kind of get that you know ugly feeling inside, like you know you've been you've been had, you've been bamboozled. So that's gonna go hand in hand with that. But as you can see, you know, maybe he's a Jake West Africa, maybe he's a. Uh, a complete hamite and he's he's talking to this reporter about well how he gonna get his money one way or another by invading your home and the first people who gonna go after is the women and the children the wheat and the scriptures back that up because it calls the women the weaker vessel even though feminism movement started in the 1940s 50s 60s heavenly in the 60s and 70s has created the idea that the woman is equal to the man you know that's not very true especially when it comes to um sports and physical strength so without further ado this brings us to the idea of where we are now and i challenge you to be respectful when you're hearing the words of the lord and understanding prophecy is going to bring a whole lot of bloodshed 
Why? Because the Most High is very angry at the wicked and he sees it fit to just justify the shedding of blood in this land based upon the blood that was shed. They basically reaping what they sow. Second Corinthians 4 and 10 says, Always bearing about in my body, in the body, the dying of our Lord Yahawashah, that the life also of Yahawashah might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahawashah's sake, that the life also of Yahawashah might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. And real quick, I'm going to read that in the NLT. Verses 10 to 12 says, Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Yahweh so that the life of Yahweh may be also seen in our bodies. Yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Yahweh so that our, the life of Yahweh will be evident in our dying bodies. So we live in the face of death, but this has resulted in eternal life for you. And that's the idea. We... As prophets and believers, we live in constant threat of death. For instance, this C-16 bill being uh, instituted over there in the land of Canada, North America, um, that exposes the idea that you should get jail time if you're teaching um, publicly the Bible, which can be considered hate. Now, anybody can deem what's hate and what's not hate based upon some loose wording. So the idea that you can continue to write this scripture down here, verse 13, NLT, but we continue to preach. The idea that you can continue to preach will lead you to be thrown in jail and locked up. America has similar laws on the way. And so it lets you know in that instance, you're in the face of death, but also just because this is the time of Jacob's trouble. The Lord is going to send a serious, fierce judgment upon his people first. It shall begin at the house of Judah, it be, uh, begin at the house of Israel, the house of Jacob. All right. The 12 tribes, you Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. So even though we the Lord's chosen people, he's still going to send us a serious um, plagues and uh, adversity uh, for us to endure through so he can um, try us. In those trials and make sure that we are um, true servants and worshipers of him so again the idea is that we die in every day or death worketh in us but life in in him everything that we go through is going to result in eternal life let's get the next scripture psalms 105 verse 17 he sent a man before them even joseph who was sold for a servant. So when you think of the idea of Joseph's life, it's nothing to blink at or, you know, it's nothing like. You know, Joseph was sold um, into slavery by his brothers. So even that was a stab in the back. But still to be an actual, you know, go through slavery as from a free man to slavery um, in a foreign land under people with a different tongue, you know, there ain't nothing to wink at that's 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 serious but yet and still the most i chose joseph to do this because he had a bigger story and a, a bigger purpose to serve verse 18 whose feet they hurt with fetters he was laid in iron so they 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 hurt him pretty bad as you can see it says until the time that the word that this, his word came the word of the lord tried him the king sent and loosed him even the ruler of the people and let him go free. So he went from slave being beat up, hurt, to free. It says he made him Lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bide, bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. So the Most High set Joseph up from being a complete slave servant at the bottom. And literally put him up to the top above princes and senators. And that just shows you the idea that the Most High is always in authority and always able to deliver whoever he wants, including his elect, mainly. I'm just going to go ahead and take the time out now to look up that word Joseph in the Hebrew, Yahweh <clears throat> In the meaning. 
<laughs> says here, Yahweh Sop. Yahweh is added. All right. And he did. He added to Joseph's stature. Psalms 31 and 4. Matter of fact, if I may jump directly to 1 Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So when we're talking about judgment in the, in the form of some of these migrants and what their purpose is going to be and how it's going to play out for them in the land of Babylon, America. Just remember that the Most High is the orchestrator of all of everyone who's who dies or everyone who's brought to life. It says the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. And that's the story of Joseph. We just read. He was a slave, a servant, and then became hired in princes. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. So, this is the Most High's playground. He does what he wants. He stages it the way he wants, and he set up the kings to whoever he wants. And takes them from any position to put them on top of the throne. As he did Joseph, he added to Joseph's position. Verse 9, he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. So the judgment of the heavenly father is going to come. Yet he still knows how to preserve and save his elect and his saints from that destruction. At the same time, he reserves that fire and that judgment only for the wicked. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So the Most High knows exactly how to deal out certain measures to certain people. Even when they're in the same country. Even when they're in the same situations or different situations, doesn't matter. Most I knows who his elect are and how to deliver them. Last scripture, Psalms 31 and 4. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, power of truth. And lastly, in the NLT, it says, pull me from the trap. My enemies set for me, for I, for I find protection in you. I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord. You are a faithful power. And these are words we live by. These words we stand by. This is the truth that the Most High is powerful enough that he could deliver you. He's sending the judgment. So he has the power to acquit you. And he did that through his blood, the blood of his son, who he already sent. And those that believe on his son of the hopeful elect, you'll be restored, you'll be healed, you'll be converted, and you'll be protected because that blood covers you in that day. So I brought this out of this video. It was edifying. Till next time, Shalom.